And welcome to Greenberg News with your host, Brian Greenberg on WNJC 1360 AM. Rocking into our 20th year on broadcasting here at NJC 1360. Because we try to give you information that can educate and inform you and hopefully utilize. And April 15th has come and gone. Uh, we had a tax freedom day, but I think that, I think they changed that date. It's now, uh, December 24th, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's when we become emancipated from uh, paying taxes. Well, we have with us Super Mario, Mario Constanz, who is here to, uh, f- the former owner of a 100 tax preparation office. I gotta talk to Mario because I'm in the business too. Mario, welcome to Greenberg News. Thank you so much for having me. So you're still, you're, you no longer own 100, uh, tax prep offices. Well, I've sold my tax prep offices last year, and we've just launched a new national tax franchise as well. So I'm still in the game. So let me ask you, so why did you sell them? Don't you have like a non-compete or something? Did they let you open up the, across the street and with a new name? No, we're not opening up across the street. We're opening up in different areas. We're national, so there are certain areas where we're not opening up this year, at least until December when the non-compete runs out. But we, uh, we're looking to be national, and we'll have offices in the majority of the states this year. Because well, I'm curious, we're going to, uh, I have, you know, I, I, by day I, I'm a CPA and I have my own little tax business that I oh, do. Oh, great. And uh, one thing I just observed is that, you know, with the, the local franchises, the HR Blocks and, you know, Liberty and whatnot, is that they all made their money, took the HR Block on the, on the loan, the, the rapid uh, advance loans, the RELs, and then when the government took them away because you can't charge people 2,000% to borrow money, uh, th- their profits really kind of cratered. So I'm curious what you, how you've managed to stay and build uh, in a very, you know, it, it's becoming, you know, more and more complex running a tax office. I'm wondering how, what, what your secret was to kind of managing growth and, and becoming the same profitable. Sure. I mean, the, the loans went away a couple of years ago, and you know, they, were, they were only ever, even at their height, only under 5% of the industry. Under 5% of people were, were taking those loans, and even though the the APR on those loans were, you know, close to thousand percent or whatever it was. The reality is, it usually only costs the consumer forty bucks or so. So, I, I mean, I, I was never, uh, we never pushed them. Um, we did have them for a period of time. Or if someone's ready to lose their house or get evicted or need to put food on the table, to spend forty dollars on a couple thousand dollar refund is really not that bad a deal. So it was really needs based. However, the government did crack down and, and eliminate them. For the most part, they still do exist in some forms in some niches across the country right now. Um, but that was never a big part of our business. So we, we catered more towards the, the middle income uh, consumer and people that um, are okay with waiting for their refunds, you know, the, the 5 to 15 days that take the IRS to issue them, typically. So, so, so happy tax, I guess. You're, you're focused on the, the middle class consumer, the W-2, and the, the mortgage statement kind of deal? Absolutely. You know, I think the retail, the majority of the retail places that you mentioned do focus on the lower income people and try to get them into a storefront location. We're actually, our franchisees will, will meet with their clients anytime, anywhere to make it easier and more convenient. Uh, in today's day and age, you don't necessarily need a storefront. You can, you can work off of a tablet. And our model is that a front-end franchise client and then sends it to have it professionally prepared by one of our CPAs. So the, the, the client itself is getting a, a much higher level of service and at the same time much more convenient hmm. now uh, does someone have to be a, f- a franchise owner in order to utilize your cpa prepared uh, services there uh, we will deal directly with the public as well however um it, it, if you want to you know so that gives the consumer even more convenience whether they want to deal with someone to meet with them or if they want to deal with us online they could do that as well right. well that's uh, the reason why i, I mean, i'm asking so I'm at, from self-interest i'm being approached about possibly buying out of practice and where I'm good on my end, to uh, I've built my own niche, uh, doing my practice, I'd be doubling in size. And I'm yeah. not really geared up to handle his volume. Yeah, and yeah. we're also talking with other, uh, you know, independents about converting and utilizing us in that way where they'll continue to act as a front-end uh, customer service, you know, provider, and we'll handle the back-end for them. Hmm. Uh, we need to talk. We'll be talking after the show, Mario. We need to reach cool. out here. Right? That's, I'll uh, send you contracts. We can make the deal happen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <It's definitely laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So let me, I should ask you, so what do you charge per return to have it prepared? Uh, so you know, the, the other problem in the tax prep industry is, you know, someone comes in and, and the majority of people in the industry charge per form. So right. that becomes complicated to give someone a price quote up front. 
And in many cases, the, the answer to a client is, hey, well, we really can't tell you how much we're going to charge until we get the return done. Uh, we've simplified that as well. We've created three buckets. We have transparent pricing, $200 for a simple return, $300 for a mid-level return, and $500 for a more complex return. We feel that the consumers will appreciate that and be able to want to use us just based off of um, knowing what they're paying going in and knowing that they're getting a higher level of service. Interesting. That. By the way, does your practice also include uh, offering financial uh, services to your uh, to your clients? Uh, no, we're not going to offer investments or insurance or anything along those lines. It's strictly tax. We will have partners that we work with that we can refer to. However, that's not going to be our core business. We're going to focus on our core business. So, by the way, do you have any uh, you have any uh, locations in South Jersey? Not yet, but we will. I see. So, so where, where, where is your? So this is brand new. Then that you're opening up. So let me ask you: the, the practice that you had sold was that a different niche than what Happy Tax is? Uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was one of the national tax franchises. We had you know offices in New York, New Jersey, Boston, Florida, as well as in Arizona, and we sold those back to the franchise door and are now launching our own franchise to um, fill the, the need that we feel is in the industry and, and uh, do it in an innovative way. Interesting, because that's, uh, that's where I felt that, you know, some of my, my nicest clients come from those, you know, you know I, I, I know they all perform a function, but because of the complexity, I get, I get some nice business from people who have been through the HR blocks and all that. that the, nothing, to, I don't disparage anybody. But it's the you know the, the the tax laws are more complicated than ever, and therefore you really need you know you can't just input data. You have to really understand what you're looking at. And I agree. That's why, and that's where yeah. I thought that they were uh, that pe- that people are just this is, you know it's hard to really you know if they really understand what they're getting, they're not really getting the service they really should want to have, uh, given you know given the complexity of the laws today. Absolutely, and and you know you won't disparage them, but I will. I mean, many of the preparers that work in those offices have those five days tax training. So consumers don't even realize that someone came in, took five days of tax training, and that's the person they're trusting with their taxes. Uh, clearly, that's not advertised, but that's why we figured and and worked our our system, which is patent pending, to have the CPAs work the back end. It's kind of just like a restaurant. So if you go to a restaurant, the chef is the expert at making food. He's not also serving. Uh, you have a waiter who's awesome in customer service doing that. So we've We've, you know, built our model that way to have people that specialize. You know, you know this. You've been in the business world. It's very difficult to find someone that has tax knowledge and is great at customer service. So that's that's one of the reasons that we split it in half. Those two processes. Now, yeah, I'm, one thing I'm curious: how do you? Uh, I'm always fascinated because I, I've, I've built my business over the years by, you know, my, I guess I have a good connection with my clients, and they refer, and it sort of worked that way. And but to do just pure marketing, starting from scratch, uh, you know, I, I in the old days I was I started out thirty years ago. I was, I was putting flyers in cars, uh, doing this part time, doing tax returns. And then when I went in full time, I was you know I, I did cold calling and all that. I did whatever it took, but that was not my strong suit. You know, I I, I got look, I got something going, and then I built on it from there. I always quite fascinated how, how a franchise would start from ground zero. And yet, be able to you know generate you know a, you know a, a sufficient business in a short period of time. What, what, you, what, what do you target, or how do you go about doing that? Would that so, be I mean, specific? In, in today's day and age, the internet is, is obviously gigantic, and it's very helpful if you know how to use it and you know how to leverage social media. And you know, but at the end of the day, what you said is exactly correct. It is the best way to get business, um, and our franchisees will work their their personal networks friends, family, coworkers, and then branch out from there and getting referrals from them. That's one of the primary ways. But, but doing so with technology is a way to not just ask someone to get a referral, but using some of the tools that we have, you can ask someone to send it out to all their Facebook friends or all their email lists, which may be hundreds of people. So it's, it's a way to kind of take the old school referral and and blow it up to the max in order to, to really make it powerful. So this a lot of ways, clearly press and getting um, interest from the public, um, promotions. Um, you know, discounting is not really the way to go in, t- in terms of getting people through the door, but it's just really it's creating. And, and, you know, customer experience really drives it home. If you, if you have an amazing customer experience and your customers really love and feel taken care of, that's going to be the best way to increase your attention, which is, you know, the easiest way, and then to get referrals. 
Um, we also always done a good job with um, reaching out to past clients. I mean, every year there's going to be some clients that leave you for one reason or another. You know, most of the time, if you're good, there are not going to be many of them. However, you know, reaching out to those old clients to bring them back in um, usually works very well in addition to, you know, just general advertising and uh, getting the word out. By the way, your CPAs, they're not, uh, all, they're not all sitting in a one room in, uh, in India, are they? Absolutely not. Everything is dress based without a doubt. We would never, you know, never, ever, ever ship to the tax. <laughs> but that, 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 and our software actually obfuscifies their the personal information so that there's no, um, you know, we take security very serious. Everything's 2000 bit SSL secured, and the um, personal information is, secu- is, is secured by um, being removed at, at the tax rep stations. Quite, well, that, which is which is uh, essential, but I always found that the hardest part of my business has been, is, is, well, in any business today, is always finding staff. And given the expertise that you need for tax preparation, how are you able to find people on a seasonal basis to do taxes, you know, of of quality uh, quality level? Well, I mean, CPAs are all trained, so I mean, there's, there's, no, I, I know CPAs are trained. I'm not saying that they're not. I'm just saying, how do you find CPAs to basically do seasonal work for you to prepare the returns? Well, I mean, just like anything else, you're going you're to market. And, you know, just like you would market to consumers, you need to raise as well. You know, simple things like Career Builder and Monster and Craigslist is one way. Um, getting referrals is another good way. So, you know, once people, you know, someone's hired and, and comes on board, who do they know that is also looking for work that may have taken accounting classes with them or taken CE credits with them? Um, there's, there's a lot of ways to recruit good people. But the key is to hire for attitude. You can teach the, the, the information to you know to anybody that has the the aptitude to learn it. Um, but if they don't have the good attitude, it's going to be very tough to have a great employee. Yeah, it's amazing today. I, I I ran across someone who was I was I literally gave her flex hours, and she she had worked with uh, Arthur Young for about five years. Kind of bounced around since then for the last few years, and I gave her a part time to full time opportunity. And I said all you have to do is just show up. You know, I don't care when you come in, as long as work gets done. In the first two days, she shows up late a half hour. Wow. And that was, in the third day, she didn't show at all. In the fourth, that was a snow day. In the fourth day, she had some child problem. I said, it's time to, time to look for the, you know, obviously her priorities weren't that great. And I yeah. just don't get it. I mean, clearly she needed the income. I know, I know her situation, but I don't, I just don't understand people today. So that, that, that's, that's where, as you say, uh, I have a much harder time finding quality people. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe, maybe, again, maybe it becomes they, a numbers game. It becomes, Getting the the message out that you're hiring the, the max the maximum number of people, so that you can kind of pick and choose, and you don't have to take someone. You get the choice of who you want to take. So, how many franchisees uh, do you have currently under Happy Time? Um, we actually just launched our franchise document. We just um, made effective on Thursday, so we're in that process right now of adding. We actually have a a goal, a pretty aggressive goal, which we will meet because we've always met mine in the past of adding a thousand franchisees this year before next tax season. Wow, a thousand! Now you you had a hundred firm office before. What? Why? Uh, and over what period of time did you accumulate that? Uh, those number of offices. That was over a period of five years. And the difference here is the franchise that I was with uh, previously cost around seventy thousand dollars to open. So we're a low cost franchise. Ours cost anywhere from five to fifteen thousand open because we're not requiring our franchisees to have any storefront leases or office leases or to recruit, hire, and train employees. They're going to be the person going out and getting the business and sending it to our back office. So they also can leverage their time and it has to do all the, as you know, the uh, the grunt work of actually getting the taxes prepared. So we'll have people in place and to, to make it easy because of that low investment to add people to our mix and uh, drive the growth of the company. So that's interesting. So I guess obviously all documents will be scanned in and, that, and that's your, uh, they need powerful scanners and that's it to, to well, make it happen? Actually, the, the patent, tech, patent pending technology um, works with a tablet. So the tablet is the client information gatherer uh, of both the, you know, the interview uh, as well as taking pictures of the tax documents that's then securely sent to, uh, to the back office for the CPA to prepare it. So, there, oh, so you're saying in the interview, obviously there's basic information that comes yeah, out. but exactly. I mean, but all and 1099s and, and stuff, there's, you're not going to ask them to... to document what's there, you're just, it's silly to, to make that step. You would just scan it and send it off to you guys. Correct, yes. And in some cases, there's, there's clearly going to be a need for the CPA preparing the return to get some additional information 
and that can be accomplished either through email or video chat through FaceTime or Skype, whichever the client prefers. All right, so then, the, and the client, uh, does the client know there's a back office CPA doing it, or do they think that the person is interviewing Of absolutely. Them? That's part of our model. That's, that's definitely the way our, our franchisees will present the product because that, you know, that's exactly what the product is, and that's one of the benefits of the product that a CPA is preparing a return compared to somebody with, you know, literal no training. Gotcha. So that's that's great. So, Mary, this is uh, now this is your, your is this your business, or you're working with others as well to launch? No, it's my business. I'm the CEO. That's, you're the president. Now, where, where are you located, by the way? Where are you based? Uh, the company headquarters in Miami Beach. I'm originally from New York, so I go back and forth. I see. I, I, I could tell. I didn't sound like you're from Miami Beach. <laughs> so, it's, Thanks. so, so you should get that cornered up at the Fountain Blue. I hear they got some nice rooms available there. I love the Fountain Blue. It's an amazing place. It, it, likewise. So uh, we got a few minutes left here, uh, and just in wrapping up, uh, what's the, uh, you know, I, I, I guess the, the question is with all this, uh, taxes will only get cut more complicated. I don't see how it'll ever get easier. Do you? No, absolutely not. They, they've progressively gotten more complicated, and especially with Obamacare. I mean, this tax season, although I didn't operate in the offices, I, I paid close attention, and I talked with many tax businesses across the country, and the, the complexity of Obamacare just really threw a, people for a loop. I mean, you know this, that they had to estimate their income for 2014 back in 2013 when the client exchange, and so many people either owned or estimated or overestimated that there was, there was some drastic changes to tax return as a result of it. And people weren't happy, especially the ones that had to owe back part of the subsidy that they received. So um, the government has always done a good job of making taxes more complex. Clearly there's some talk now about simplifying that, but that same talk has been there for 30 years, so I don't see the benefit of being changed. Special interest that you know, drive this country, and too many special interests benefit by the complexity of the laws. So, Absolutely. Uh, they'll never change. Hey, Mario, uh, give a plug-in for Happy Tax, and now uh, the pers- people want to uh, get into the tax biz, and you don't need to be a CPA. That sounds like what you're telling me. Correct, yeah. Anybody that's interested, you can check out gethappytax.com, and if you're interested in your information, we'll get, we'll get in touch with you and, and share a little more details about our offering and share our, our franchise disclosure document. Um, there's no need to quit your job. There's no need to, no taxes. Uh, it's just an opportunity to make some extra money and be part of a great company that's that's uh, growing by leaps and bounds. Sounds great. Hey, Mary, you dropped me an email. Brian at GrunbergCPA.com. Gotcha. Hey, Looking yeah. forward to talking to you. Same here. Likewise. All right, and that's it. We are out of time. Hope you enjoyed the program, and uh, we'll see you all next week.